Good evening, everyone. It's Kiwi here. It's uh, the evening of day 63 from uh, glittering Parisburg, Virginia. Uh, yeah, it's been an interesting, uh, been an interesting week. Lots of uh, ups and downs emotionally. Most of it angry at the landscape. And uh, this uh, rather insistent rain, which, uh, you know, it does get old. It does get old. But the, uh, the tent is holding up really well. I'm very happy with the tent. Um, went through some pretty, pretty decent rain on Thursday night at, uh, was it, Wapiti Shelter? Um, there were there were three three other hikers in there, and it's not a big shelter, so I just uh, set up my tent and uh, yeah, man. As soon, as soon as I got that tent up and got in it, then the rain started and uh, basically rained consistently throughout the night, and I only got a few drops running down the uh, the mesh, and it seems to be originating from a drip. By the air vents, I've got two air vents on each each end. So, yeah, man, it's ninety five dollar ten. It's doing awesome. Um, yeah, you know the um, the uh, the couple in their sixties who I met uh, a few days back. They had a three person um, was it a marmot tent, and their three person definitely was bigger than mine. I mean, this should be a weight eight pounds. Mine's five, five and a half with the ground sheet. But um, what I liked about their tent is that, because mine, mine's a dome, so the poles are just curved. But the marmots, they go up and then they curve. And it was quite noticeable um, just how much um, how much extra usable room that creates um, because the those more vertical pole sections dramatically increase your actual usable space because you know any, any tent has got a curve yes I mean this is the length but your head still has to stay here because otherwise you're touching the mesh and then you know, or the fabric if it's a uh, single wall and you're just encouraging moisture to, to come through it. But I, I like the I like the design of it. It was, it was neat. But uh yeah, eight pounds. Pretty pretty heavy. Um yeah, as I mentioned in one of my uh videos this week, my trekking poles. I'm I'm so happy with those trekking poles, man. I mean no, they they're not the thinnest, no they're not the lightest. I mean they're light enough that I don't I don't really register their weight, but when you compare them to, you know, some really expensive ones out there, I mean, yeah, then you can tell that there's a difference. But, uh, you know, I've just had zero problems with them. You know, foam grip, clamp adjustments, 30 bucks from Amazon, and uh, nothing's, nothing's gone wrong with them. And, um, and like I mentioned in the in the video, the amount of people I've met with expensive poles and the damn things keep breaking. And you know, you can forgive it if you're just out on a day hike. But man, if you're like three to four days from the next resupply, man, that's a pain in the ass. You know? If, I, if, I'm, if I'm paying good money for trekking poles, and I mean between, you know, 100 and 200 bucks. I, I don't want them to break. I want them to work. I want them to work all the time. And uh, so, no, that's been, um, it's been a pleasant surprise how well the, um, the, the cheap, the cheap gear that I've bought um, is lasting. Yes, the big question. Big question. When did you start? When did you start? When did you start?
when did you start? And uh, man, it's, it's so weird, man. It is so weird how competitive people get. And uh, <laughs> it's very weird. It's very weird. And people like lose themselves in it. And I had, I had one, one young lady ask me, you know, when did you start? And I said, well, January 29th. And she's like, God, you've been out here a long time to only get here. True story. True story. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, I don't really have a, a set mileage per day agenda or, or a set time that I've got to be back, you know, um, at work or whatever. And, uh, you know, taking time off for injury and zero days for weather and video uploads and time with my wife and, and all this other good stuff. And, uh, and she says, oh, yeah, wow, well, yeah, I, I, I started, like, I think it was like the last day of February or something. And I'm like, well, yeah, that, that's awesome. Yeah, good for you. You're a rock star. Now, the, the hilarious part of this um, situation is that unbeknownst to this woman, I threw a little birdie heard that she and her friends are yellow blazing like bandits like absolute bandits and uh, for those out there who don't know what yellow blazing is it means that you're, you're getting off the, the trail and, and hitchhiking because you're at this point and you want to get to this point but unfortunately it's like this And they don't want to. So, apparently, what these what these people have been doing is uh, skipping 80, 100 mile sections, uh, trail trail miles. And uh, you know, by car, it could be you know 30, 40 miles, but on the trail, it's it's a lot longer. You're just meandering up and down, up and down, sideways. So they've been skipping massive massive chunks repeatedly so you know yes I could have just engaged her and said you know I, I know you're full of it shut the hell up but uh, you know the, the mature adult in me stopped me this close but yeah it's 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 hilarious it's hilarious how much um, posturing and uh, oh, what's a polite way to say it? Male appendage swinging goes on from people on the trail, and you know, men and women, about how awesome they are, and um, <laughs> and they just they just assume that nobody nobody knows, you know, what they're about. And I bumped into so many people who say, "Oh, you know." Yeah, you're, you're going to meet some people at the next shelter or some people are going to be catching up with you. And, you know, they're like, blah, 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 blah. How awesome they are. But, yeah, the, the, the blue blazing, yellow blazing. All the time, so. <sighs> you know, one of my, one of my go-to saints, I, I've realized I keep saying it in videos, but it is what it is. It is what it is, man. Anyway, yeah, so um, during the week made it to uh, Halby's Mills Shelter, and it's, you know, it's one of those weird, it's one of those weird places, the, the shelter, the shelter's okay, and there's decent tenting around it, but you know, at the end of a long day, you know, it's 0.3 of a mile off the trail. But the worst part is that the water source is 0.3 of a mile down a, down a slope. And I got there with, um, I don't know, I think like one and a half bottles of water. 
So I was like, you know, I'll just go easy on the water tonight before I go to bed. And I'll have enough to get me to, I think there was a stream a few miles past it, like three or four miles. But uh, this young cat rocked up at, at five in the morning and uh, he needed the water. He absolutely needed the water. So he went down. And I was awake. Um, so after you know quite quite a long time, he, he came back up. And I said, "Oh, you know, so how's how's the water down there?" And his only response was, "Annoying." So yeah, it's a uh, it's a long walk down. It's steep, and the water is not that amazing, uh, like the flow. And then you got this point three of a mile hike back up a, a steep slope to get get back to your gear and leave again so yeah it's weird some of some of the locations and their water sources are kind of strange yes yeah, so i got to uh have a bath at chestnut shelter this week which was really really nice because uh man it was hot it's just just sweating bullets that whole day, the whole day. And uh, I finished the uh, the incline uh, with a young um, young lady hiker, and uh, she was saying as well, like God, I'm just sweating, just sweating. And so we we go to the shelter, and there was um, two other hikers, one one of whom I'd met before. Um, young British guy from Manchester and uh, man you walk into that shelter and because it's enclosed <laughs> you walk through the door you're like <sighs> hiker smell and uh, so you know I had a I had a quick bite to eat and and you know, I just let them know that you know I'm just gonna give myself a bath and, and they're like wait what so I pull out my Handy collapsible, foldable, three ounce wash basin, and uh, pour some cold water into it. Pour the rest of the water into my pot, boiled it. Put my peppermint soap in the uh, wash basin. Poured the boiling water over that, and uh, proceeded to give myself a bath. You know, and uh, God. It's so awesome to be able to bathe, like with with water, because wipes wipes barely do a damn thing. And uh, you know, like on your feet, you can wipe, 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 and the dirt's still there. But man, you you put them in a you put them in a, a steaming, and I mean steaming, uh, foot bath, and the dirt just dissolves away. And you're left with these sparkling, brand new pepperminty feet, and uh, yeah, man, they were jealous. They were so jealous. And I, you know, I, I offered, I offered for them to use it, and they're like, "Nah, like, I think they were conserving their water." But you know, I carried, I carried water up that damn hill. You know, sometimes you just got to suck it up and carry that weight, man, because it's worth it. It's worth it to be able, to, I mean, in my case, to to have a bath at the end of the day. But yeah, man, they were they were so jealous, but uh, appreciative at the same time because now the now the shelter smelled of peppermint instead of you know hiker ass. I don't know what's worse, hiker ass or hiker feet. Mmm, it's a close call, man. It's a close call. Yes. Uh, risk of sounding like a broken record here. Virginia. Oh my god. Trail of rocks. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. If there's usable area on the left and there's usable area on the right, why are we walking on these rocks? And, uh, you know, it's not like these things are just smooth top slabs 
you know, <laughs> like a sleet <laughs> sidewalk or a, or a path around your home. These things are on knife edges like this, or sideways, or teeter-tottering. And it's, it's brutal on the feet, man. And precarious, and dangerous. Very dangerous. Um, because, you know, you get any rock and put it in moist weather, it's going to start growing, you know, moss, lichen, you know, whatever. And then you put fresh rain on that. Man, it's like walking on oiled glass. And uh, going up to um, going up to Doc's Knob Shelter. I mean, I I slipped front ways, back ways, and sideways about four or five times, and twice I had to release my poles. I mean, I, you know, I've still got the little uh, straps on. I had to release the poles and go down to uh, to stop myself from face planting or side head planting into these things. And uh, you know, I, I just think it's I think it's unnecessary. Um, it's, it's 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 unnecessarily dangerous, and and especially when you've got you know hundreds of meters of it. And like I said, man, it's not flat. It's this, plus this, plus this. You know. It's crazy. Crazy. I don't get it. Now, I know Virginia loves their rocks. They've got a lot of them. They've got a lot of them. And I'm sure someone out there thinks that making a trail out of rocks is hilarious. But I think they, they need a reroute. I think they need a reroute. Um, someone mentioned in the comments that, well, they've, they've made these trails out of rocks. I mean, the rocks were there anyway, but they've added to them to make this pathway of rocks. Uh, reason being that if they didn't do that, you'd have a primarily dirt trail that would be prone to erosion. And, um, and that rocks don't erode. I'm like, well, yeah, okay, gotcha. But, you know, if you, if you did certain things with the trail, and, you know, there's this, there's this crazy thing called diagonal drainage channels. I know, I know, it's a, it's a new, weird, and wacky thing. But I tell you, man, coming out of Wild Pity Shelter, and this is a prime example, coming out of Wild, Wild Pity Shelter, all the way past Doc's Knob, there were areas there where you could have had over a hundred, well over a hundred diagonal drainage channels built into this track and I think I counted four so it's it's inconsistent um, design with the trail because if you've got I mean leaving, leaving Wild Pity after we had the rain that night within about 20 meters well, 20 meters maybe 50 you're already in mud and the the dinky little what would have been about a one foot maybe two foot this deep little side stream thing going over the trail leading to another more major feeder was now you know this deep and you know eight feet across and, you know, they've got rocks to burn, but there's no rocks <laughs> at that location to, to counter the, the differences when, it, when it's been raining. And so once you go past that, and this, you know, this rinse and repeat, man, the, the, this happens about three more times before you've gone more than half an hour. And then 
the the trail just becomes a stream because there's no there's no diagonal drainage channel so all the water is just following following the trail down well I mean if, if people are worried about erosion if you put the drainage channels and then you won't have water creating these half tubes of trail and um, you know and a lot of these places the the water is taking up basically all the usable walking area or you'll get to um, you'll get to some flatter areas flattish but the water's still running because there's, there's such a volume of it and so you're either walking in the water which is about this deep or there's mud on the sides that's this deep and then there's rhododendron bushes right right to the edges well you can't walk through rhododendron bushes you can't do it it's like rebar you know you could you could put that stuff in cement or hold a building together it's tough stuff so this is just me this is just a a suggestion either put drainage channels in so that you don't have all this water and mud issue on the trail that you're trying to keep intact or trim the rhododendrons back because the rhododendrons are right I mean they're right to the edges so you've got to lean to get around them and then you're leaning precariously over mud and water and you know nobody with their pack wants to fall in mud and uh, you know, eight to ten inches of water so yeah that's what I would do put in more drainage channels and it was just miles and miles of this after the rain and it's not like we had tropical rain it was just consistent rain throughout the night it was a good uh, 12 13 13 hours because it started at eight o'clock that night and petered off around nine and of course it rained during the day later but but you know the track the track couldn't couldn't contain that water so yeah that's that's my little rant on the water it may sound a little whiny but um it really comes down to the safety of the hikers um safety of your gear and uh you know controlling erosion of the trail I mean, if you've got all these rocks, utilize the rocks. Build the diagonal channels using rock face. You know, I mean, it's not like it hasn't been done in Virginia. I've seen it. It's just rare. Yeah, before, yeah. Um, I came across, I, I want to say it now because otherwise I'll forget they're doing a burn um, in a fairly substantial area and part of the AT falls within it once you cross uh, this gravel road on your way to Doc's Knob Shelter and uh, anybody coming along the next few days you're going to come across this sign they've got one on a tree at one end they've got one on a tree at the other end so Basically, the, the AT falls right on the right-hand border, like right on the right-hand border of this burn area that they're doing. It's going to be um, April 1st through May 10th, but they gave no indication of how they're scheduling the zones within that area to burn. So, But it does say that the AT is going to be closed when, when they're burning it. So I don't know. The gravel, the gravel road. You, you'll come out of the woods, you cross the gravel road, and then you'll see the sign. Well, the AT on the other side of the road is within the burn area, but it looks like the burn area stops at the gravel road. If you went right on the gravel road, it loops around, and then the AT meets it again, and then you go uphill another mile or so, another couple of miles 
to uh, docks and off shelter. So uh, I guess you could, you know, like unofficially blue blaze it and uh, just follow just follow the gravel road to the right when when you come to it. Um, or call the uh, the forest service and see if someone there can help with um, with the actual scheduling of this this burn is. So it's it's a fairly decent area. Yeah, yeah. Doc's not man. It's, I mean, it's uh, it's the same design as a lot of the the shelters in the area. You know, simple. You know, the overhangs about this. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a wacky location, man. It's again, it's like on these rocks and surrounded by mud, and the water, the water flow coming off the mountain. I mean, actually, it looked like it was seeping out of the ground. It was coming out of the ground underneath the shelter. And uh, man, there was hardly any tenting around that place. I really, I really didn't see anything that. That really stood out. I mean, you're, you're kind of at the shelter. But the other funny thing is that the privy is... Man, it's like well over 100 yards away on the other side of the... Um, it's kind of like a... It's like a forest sort of service road. But it's not gravel, but you know, it's wide enough that they could, they could obviously take vehicles on it. And I think I mentioned in the video that, man, if you were... If you had a stomach bug or... You know, you ate some food that wasn't agreeing with you, man. You, you better be hauling ass to that thing. Cause uh, yeah, it's a it's a hike, man. It's a hike to get over there fast. But it it, it is a nice privy though. <laughs> uh, you know, the toilet seats attached, which uh, I always think is a is a good thing. Yeah, that metal one at um, Jenny's knob. Man, you you wouldn't want to be a you want to be a child sitting on that. You could you could fall to a miserable land inside that thing, I tell you. Yes. The the area when you're the the, the high flat area before you start your, your descent into Parisburg. You know <clears throat> I mentioned in the video that I met these this father and son uh, duo who were walking southbound, and I and I asked him, you know, what are are there any camping options before Parisburg? Because I'm just going to stay the night and then go into Parisburg in the morning, yada yada. And he's like, well, I don't really see anything. You can maybe you know camp by the power lines. There was some grass there. And I said, you know, is there anything beyond that? He's like, nah, nah, it's all. It's all rocks and blah blah blah. I'm like, well, crap. You know, that I would prefer to have gone further. <laughs> so I get, I get up to the power lines, and, you know, and there's a campsite right there before you get to them. Then there's the grassy area that yes, you you, you could camp, but just on the other side, that there's an even larger, more obvious campsite. With, uh, with a fire ring and, and whatnot. And it's just amazing how unobservant people are. And, um, and for that whole, that whole ridge line, I mean, after that, um, after that campsite on the north side of the power lines, yeah, there wasn't a lot going on for about 15 minutes, and then I found a, a perfectly reasonable spot. Um, without a lot of um, fallen dead wood and stuff like that, and, um, and so I just I just pitched tent. I was like, done, all right, good to go. But when I left in the morning, and you and you keep going north, and there, there's there's multiple multiple areas that that you could make use of, and uh, you know the best place was at that view. Um, Overlooking Perisburg, it was a uh, mile 631.6. It's not the Angel's Rest, it's just listed as view. 
And uh, then, man, that was a great camp spot right there. I mean, you could easily put a three-person tent or a, or a couple of doubles, um, you know, right right on the edge. I mean, not dangerously on the edge, but, you know, there was a fire pit there. You know, if it wasn't pouring with rain, I may have even been tempted to light a little campfire if I'd stayed there last night. But, yeah, that, that that's a neat spot. And, uh, and there's area actually at Angel's Rest as well. Um, better, better for a hammock, but you, you, you could put a, you could put a double tent right by those rocks there as you immediately come off the path to actually walk. And it's just like a hundred yards. Put rhododendrons in that to uh to get to the actual view from from that angle. But uh, yeah, there's there's plenty, there's plenty. You, you can you can make it work in a, in a lot of different locations on that on that uh, ridge line. And it's not as um, it's not a knife's edge. It's it's pretty expansive, man. So yeah, that's a that's a pretty good climb coming down to Parisburg. I um I I don't think I'd want to walk up that boss. <laughs> You know, going southbound. That, that that would take a while. That would take a while. And, um, you know, it was weird. I passed this young couple. They were like teenagers. Like teenage teenagers. Like 15, 16 tops. Male and female type. Walking up there this morning as I was coming down. And the temperatures were already getting cold. The, the temperatures dropped quite a lot this evening. And they're, they're on their way up. No, you know, it rained fairly consistently last night as well. And the track's soggy as hell in, in a lot of places. And uh, and there was more rain around. I mean, you can just see it. I mean, when you're up at the Angel's Rest, I mean, you're, you're almost at eye level with the clouds rolling in. And you can see rain in the distance. And this young couple's just... Walking up the hill. Got no raincoats. Guys in a t-shirt and shorts. She's in like leggings and a t-shirt. And it's just like, it just blows my mind, man. I mean, how, how people go out without really understanding the weather. And, uh, and you know, it's not a quick, it's not a quick descent if they got up there and weather turned really nasty. Because they had nothing with them. They had nothing with them. They were just walking up the hill. And, uh, you know, the older guy and me just wanted to say, man, you know, it's, uh, it's a little precarious going up there, man. You guys got no no jackets or anything? Ah, uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But, yeah, it's a, it's a decent climb down. I think it, well, it was, it was a messy track, messy track coming down this morning. It took me about... 50 minutes to an hour to do just the descent um, and just a lot of a lot of water seepage coming out of the hill the track was muddy as hell in a lot of areas and no no way to walk around it so yes yeah, lovely yes yeah, so I made it into uh, Parisburg and um, rocked up to the Plaza Motel I mean, who doesn't want to stay at the plaza? And uh, they had a posted on the office door, no vacancy. I'm like, damn it! But I rang the doorbell anyway. And uh, this really lovely um, older lady, who's uh, I guess the manager, opens the door and I said, "So you know, is that posted still current?" And she goes, "Yeah, we're we're fully booked." And she said, you know, but if somebody leaves, you know, at 11, you know, then we'll, we'll have a room ready for you. And so, you know, I left her my, my phone number of that. And I said, you know, is it possible for, for me to do some laundry in that uh, while I wait? And she's like, well, you know, I do the laundry. So but they don't have coin-operated machines here. They just have two washing machines, two dryers, and it's in its own little dedicated laundry room. And she does the laundry, and it's free. It's free. 
for hikers, she said. And so uh, she leads me over to the to the laundry room, and I'm starting to pull stuff out. She goes, do you need to get changed? And I was like, you know, I probably do. I probably do. I said, I'm going to pick out the best of the worst and uh, and wear that to go go and have breakfast. She goes, well, you, you feel free, honey. You, you, you get undressed in here, and I'll stand outside the door. And... <laughs> Yeah, it's very sweet. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, I just got all my all my dirty stuff together. I put it in the washing machine while I had the room to myself and opened the door and she came in and she goes, now, do you prefer powder or liquid? And I was like, whatever floats your boat, honey. I, I really don't care. You know, I trust you. And uh, so, yeah, you know, and uh, she allowed me to put, keep my pack in the, in the laundry room as well, because the laundry room's locked when she's not in it. Only her and, and one other elderly lady have access to it. And so, you know, I, w I was able to just walk around the couple of stores down and go have uh, breakfast at Dairy Queen, which I've never done before in my life, and, uh, and had my laundry going. And my pack was uh, safe and secure. So, yeah, I went to Dairy Queen, had some chicken strips, which went bad, went bad. Better than Bojangles, which I had in um, Hampton, which were absolute crap, absolute crap. Um, but at least Dairy Queen's chicken tenders were actual chicken tenders, you know. And I got a, a side order of onion rings, and yeah, they were, they were pretty decent onion rings. They were pretty decent onion rings. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. And I uh, got a coffee and, you know, a soda came with the meal that I got. And, you know, they had free refills, obviously, on the soda and free refills on the coffee. And I think I had, like, three coffees. It wasn't it wasn't bad coffee either. It wasn't bad coffee. Um, I would say the coffee I had at McDonald's was a little more robust. But not by much. Not by much. I'm not a big fan of Dunkin' Donuts. Um, it's not robust enough for me. So yeah, I actually preferred uh, McDonald's coffee to Dunkin' Donuts. But um, yeah, I just asked them, you know, do you guys have Wi-Fi here? She said yes. I said, you know, what's the password? She gave me the password. And uh, that's that's not me passing gas. It's just my foot on the uh, vinyl. And... Uh, and I was able to upload upload my first video there while I was having breakfast. So the, their Wi-Fi at Dairy Queen is actually pretty pretty darn quick. And uh, while I was there, I got a phone call from the plaza. They said, hey, your room's ready. Went back there. And their, their Wi-Fi is quick, man. With, with some caveats. So the Wi-Fi the wi is really quick. But it's all over the place. And the range isn't great. So, what I ended up doing was uh, sitting in the open door to my room where I had a better line of sight to the uh, transmitter. And uh, I just sat there in the, in the chair uploading a couple of videos before I went and resupplied. But I was uploading 30 minute videos in 30 minutes. One of them was less than 30 minutes. So when it's, when it's going, it's awesome. It's like one of the fastest Wi-Fi's I've had on the entire trail. Um, but then you'll like lose signal for some reason. And so I ended up like scooting my chair <laughs> continually to the left, getting closer to the office and the, uh, and the transmitter that's on the roof outside right above it. But uh, yeah, yeah, good, good Wi-Fi speed during the day. It slowed down after five. Um, I'm actually, while I'm recording this, I'm I'm trying to upload another video to YouTube, but it's going significantly slower after five o'clock. Um, I'll probably just upload these earlier in the morning when I when I get up. Yeah, so. Uh, 
had breakfast at Dairy Queen. Went to the room at about 12. And bear in mind that breakfast at Dairy Queen was pretty late. It was about 9, 9.30, 9.45, something like that. And so, you know, I'm in there uploading a video. So I've been in there a while, making the most of it, making the most of it, and the Wi-Fi. And so I go to the room, have a shower, which was awesome. And then I turn right around and go out to Pizza Plus. <laughs> so I went out to Pizza Buffet, and it was only about a two-hour difference from when I just eaten breakfast. And I plowed through that as well. And uh, met up with a couple of uh, hikers, through hikers northbound, um, who I bumped into at Wild Pity. And uh, had a nice chat with them in there. And, and uh, came back to the room, uploaded another video. And I was like, nah, you know, I need to go resupply. So the food line is just across the street. It's a supermarket. It's, it's a perfectly reasonable supermarket. Um, there wasn't anything that that I resupply with that I couldn't get there. And uh, I actually found, because, I mean, I've still got some mashed potatoes left because I was forcing myself to eat them and some nights I just couldn't do it. So I bought a couple of ramen, just like single packets instead of packs of five, like you have to buy at Dollar General. And two new flavors that I haven't had before, sriracha chicken and chicken tortilla. So, I'm pretty excited. Pretty excited. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good supermarket. There's, there's everything you need there. And uh, they even had uh, croissants. <sighs> but when I have croissants, I wasn't really in the mood for them. So I got some sort of cherry cheese Danishy things. But uh, yeah, you don't, you don't need to go to Walmart. You don't need to go to Walmart. Oh, and the other nice thing they did was um, give me the club price. Well, no, the store price. The young lady just asked me if I had a card. I said, no, I'm just passing through. She goes, I'll, I'll give you the store price. I was like, cool. All right. Viewer comments. Yes, so. Um, yeah, back in, um, back in Marion, someone had, uh, left a comment that they they day hiked or overnight hiked to a to a really nice campsite past Dismal Falls, and uh, and so he he left a he left a couple of large K's at the uh, at the entrance to the side trail that goes off to it, and uh, and so I came across that and I was like no oh, this is the, the spot and. Uh, Walk down there, and that's that's a great campsite, man. You can play football or uh, frisbee. Easy, easy peasy. And this thing, awesome spot. And uh, thank you, thank you to that viewer that suggested going there because that, that's a lovely spot. And uh, you know, flat, grassy, you've got a little stream running by. Really nice, lovely, lovely setting, surrounded by trees. Yeah, good, good, good call. I appreciate that. Yeah, early riser. <laughs> he said he was getting angry just watching my videos, looking at those rocks again. So it's not just me. Yeah, people were um, people are laughing at my comments about you know trying to control my language in these videos and uh, one of them was saying that uh, you know I've got the most acceptable language of any any ex-military he's ever heard uh, they put me in the same category as, as priests and vicars or chaplains I guess they, they call them the army but, but you know I do try I do try but you know what I do say that is, that's not going to change. You know, that's not going to change. Uh, you know, it's my channel. Sometimes you just have to say, God damn. Or ass. Or Jesus. 
But you know, I you know, way back, way back, I had a, I had a viewer leave a comment saying that you know he enjoyed the videos, but um, he was he was leaving my channel because of my my language and uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. I was like, well, you know, hey, whatever floats your boat, man. But you know, I, I don't know what kind of bubble people live in where um where you get upset at hearing Jesus and God damn yeah it's weird weird nothing nothing against people who are very um devout but uh you know it's, it's pretty tame stuff so I, I think people will, will live and uh and get on with their lives Yeah, and to be honest, you know, I've I've had to delete some videos <laughs> where I'm where I'm walking along and something happens and I just blah. I'm like, nah, gotta delete that one. Can't put that one up. Cause yeah, I mean, in my general life, I kind of do swear like a sailor a little bit. But uh, yeah, 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 I, I try, I try. Actually, I had to. Uh, I should had to delete one of my videos. It was after I had uh, McDonald's for breakfast. Let's just say my body was uh, not terribly happy with my decision that morning. It was creating a, a lot of very spontaneous gas. And uh, yes, it did show up on the microphone. So yeah, no one was next. It was impressive though. Very impressive. Yeah, people have been thanking me again for um, for the more detailed information that I'm putting on these videos, and uh, you know, I'm continuing to get people saying that you know they're they're annotating in their um, in their AWOL books for for when they're doing their their through hike. So that's awesome. You know, I, I would have loved to have uh, been able to do that myself. You know, because there's there's a lot of stuff out there that's that's not in the book. And people have said there's more, more stealth, campy places uh, listed in gut hooks. But um, yeah, and, and I like I like the concept of gut hooks. I just think they're sixty bucks for something that's just digitally uh, reproduced thousands of times is a little uh, is a little excessive um, for a one-off product. You know, if it was twenty bucks, I would have bought it. But you know, again, you've you've got to take into account um, being reliant on electronics. Um, you know, conserving battery power. You know, having you know a, a good capacity battery charger. If you're going to be looking at you know at your phone all the time, seeing where you're at with GPS and and all this other good stuff. I mean, the the concepts the concepts great, but I I think sixty dollars when AOL's book I think is like sixteen. Um, you know, for 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 me the math doesn't add up, but you know I like the concept. I do like the concept, and um, you know I don't show every every good spot that I come across because sometimes um, sometimes it's just raining you know or it's not raining but the uh, the moisture levels are so high that I'm, I'm already having issues with the mic um, cutting out and I'm sure it's a safety feature built into the phone but uh, you know just just bear in mind that there's, there's other stuff besides what I'm showing um, and sometimes I won't show a spot because you know it's only good for like one tent, or you know it's it's suitable for two tents. But you know there's there's trees falling on it that you know no one's moving, like, no one's moving, or there's just an absolute ton of dead wood that's that's rained down on this thing. So you know it's not a particularly safe site. So you know the, the, there are some caveats to uh, to the sites that I'm that I'm showing people. Yeah, man, Plaza Motel. It's um, 
you know, as you can see, it's just cinder block, and uh, I've got two. I don't know what this thing is. A double, maybe. Two double beds in here. The beds are comfortable. Um, the floor was clean. Sheets are clean. The towels are nice and soft, and they smell nice. Um, it's got really uh, effective space heaters in it, like you know the little floor skirting board style ones. There's one by the window that's heating this room up amazingly, and there's one in the bathroom. And uh, and there's an air conditioning unit in that wall for uh, for the summer months. But um, yeah, this is actually better than I thought it would be, to be honest. And the fact that it's you know there's free laundry. I mean, I did I did two loads. Um, I was planning to do two loads anyway, but uh, the fact that it's free, I mean, you know, and I think with taxes it was $43. So, you know, and it's in a handy location. I mean, you're a two minute walk from Dairy Queen, you're a two and a half minute walk from Pizza Plus, you're about a two minute, 45 second walk from Hardee's. That's basically across the street from Pizza Plus, and then across the street here, just walk down a little goat trail through the grass and you're, you're at food line so it, it, it's a good place to stay now if you aren't if you aren't able to get a room here there's a new hostel that's just opened um, the uh, the guys I met at Pizza Plus again today and um, the guy from Manchester in England they stayed at the Angels Rest Hostel and uh, by how he described the directions, it's just this this main road that the motel and food line are on. You just follow it down until you hit a first left past some trees, and it doubles back, and there's there's a hostel in there somewhere. And um, no, he said it's a perfectly le legit place. They got some bunk rooms, and um, or a bunk room, and one one private room. And uh, I think he said the private room which he took uh, was 35 bucks. So, and he had like a queen size bed in there and he was just able to starfish out. And he was, he was happy as Larry, so. So that's, that's another option and it's not listed in the book, I'm pretty sure it's, it's new. And uh, they just had mattresses delivered for the bunks today. Today or yesterday? Yesterday. So yeah, it's freshly up and running, but but they, they all said they liked it. So that's a good option. Well, I think that's it. Um, I'm resupplied. Next stop will be uh, Troutville or Daleville, probably Daleville, which I mean, they seem to like border each other on uh, two sides of a highway. And uh, that's probably another, you know, four to five days away, depending on the terrain and uh, weather conditions. So, uh, yeah, that, that'll be my next uh, port of call. And uh, thanks, everybody, for, for watching and, uh, and all the uh, positive comments and, uh, you know, that you're finding, finding what I do useful and interesting. Um, it's much appreciated and uh, it's, it's neat getting feedback from people. And uh, that's it from Kiwi. All right, it's the uh, end of a, a very uh, interesting, frustrating week. But um, you know, I got some decent footage and, and some, I think some some fairly neat uh, still photos too out of it. So you know, there's always a silver lining. All right, but bye for now. I will see you in the morning as I set off out of Harrisburg on my way to Daleville. All right, good night, everyone.